Welcome to Revenue Marketing Television, the CMO Insights Series. I'm your host, Jeff Pedowitz, President and CEO of the Pedowitz Group. Today, I'm absolutely thrilled to have Suzanne Sawyer, who is Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer for Marketing at Penn Health Systems, which is part of the University of Pennsylvania Health System. Suzanne, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jeff. Great to be here. So, first of all, wow, what what uh, a great institution. So, I, I grew up in South and Central Jersey, so very familiar with the uh, University of Pennsylvania. Um, so but tell us a little bit more about your role um, and who are you marketing to and some of your responsibilities. Well, well, first of all, I'm uh, so thrilled to hear that you're familiar with Penn. Uh, it's an incredible organization and very delighted to be part of it. My role as a VP and CMO is really to help build the brand in medicine and really to help build the business, of course. And who are we marketing to? Well, we're really marketing to the mid-Atlantic region, people who are patients or consumers even, people who don't currently have healthcare issues, but who certainly have health that they want and need to maintain. And so we talk to the general public in that way, but we also speak to what you might call more of a B2B kind of audience. We speak to community-based referring physicians or community-based specialists who may send patients to Penn Medicine uh, for advanced care or subspecialty care. Okay. So what are some of um, your differentiators? I mean, because I know there's a couple big health systems, right, in the area, some other conglomerates of, of hospitals and institutions. So. What is it um, that makes Penn stand apart? Well, Penn has been known for many, many years uh, as an institution that focuses really in advanced medicine and subspecialty care. So when I say that, that means things like the most advanced cancers, um, issues in terms of the neurosciences, heart failure, heart transplantation, rare and orphan diseases, things like this. And so that has been the legacy of Penn Medicine. And more recently, through acquisition and affiliations and alliances, Penn's health system has grown. And we've partnered with and acquired community-based hospitals and health systems as well. And so now Penn is more than we've been, if you will, in a certain sense. So we still have that legacy strength of being one of the top 10 hospitals and health systems in the United States, among the highest one, two or three medical schools in the United States and big recipient of uh, NIH funding. But in addition, we now also have community-based partners who offer primary care and care close to home. So regardless of where you are in the region, you can access the Penn Medicine physician um, for both your you know, frequent everyday primary care needs as well as easy access to subspecialty care if it's needed. That's fantastic. So you know, you've been doing this for a while. What, what's changed the most in marketing for you over the last few years? Well, um, yes, I think there have been an awful lot of changes in, in marketing in general and certainly in healthcare marketing. And I think for us here at Penn and um, really throughout this industry, it has been our um, real strong focus in what we call precision marketing. And it's really the use of marketing technology, marketing uh, data and an effort to really connect more one-to-one -one with each of these key audiences that we were speaking about, the referring physicians, as well as patients, families, caregivers, um, and, and the like. And so it has really been the fact that, as you mentioned, there are so many health systems that are really terrific organizations in this market. It made us really rethink how we go to market a little bit differently. Um, about, I would say about seven years ago, we felt that there was essentially a mass media arms race going on in the Philadelphia market. Um, about 
six academic medical centers, nearly 80 acute care hospitals. And there was an awful lot of mass media expense, as you might imagine, in this market. And while Penn has always enjoyed a very strong brand here, I think we felt that this is a conservative organization, and I think we felt that we were not likely to continue or willing to continue to spend in mass media at those same levels. And so it really got me thinking that it would be a good idea for us to look at taking a more precise data-driven approach to trying to connect with people who were actively searching for healthcare. And that's what led us to first invest in a CRM platform and then to build it from there. Now, so um, you mentioned technology a few times. Besides CRM, what other types of technologies have you invested in? Well, we use our CRM for lots of things, certainly to connect with those audiences that I mentioned. But we also use it with um, our uh, physician liaisons who go out and communicate with our referring physician audience, as I said. And then we also integrate it into our call center, uh, which is a large customer-facing call center. In addition to that, that CRM for each of those audiences, we also have a CMS system, um, and we have really all, all of the tools in the set, social listening, uh, marketing automation. We really have all of the technology uh, stack, if you will, that, that we might need um, for the go-to-market activity, um, personalization through our CMS. Uh, and then we've also invested significantly in our data, um, really our data set and the development of a marketing data warehouse as well. Do you have any unique challenges because you're in healthcare dealing with HIPAA governance compliance and how you are approaching setting up your technology and how you're doing your marketing? Yeah, that's a really great question. We do. You know, <clears throat> when it comes to healthcare, it's very important to do a couple of things. One is to be very customer centric, patient centric, and to understand that when people are searching for information, it's very often because they are facing a difficult medical situation. And so being sure to um, communicate in a straight up, responsible kind of way. People are looking for information, they're looking for answers, they're looking for the best way to connect. And so we take that very seriously. It can't be about hype, it can't be about fear, it has to be straight up communications that's respectful of the patient and the caregiver, first off. I would say that in addition to that, there are always privacy concerns. We call it HIPAA, um, as many people are familiar with patient privacy uh, issues. And so it's very important that we as marketers understand what the rules of the road are in terms of um, personal health information. And in fact, we don't uh, access any of the personal health information for any purpose other than to communicate with existing patients to let them know about additional resources that might be available to them, like support groups or clinical trials or care associated with the um, condition that it is that they are being treated for now. So yes, there are some special circumstances around marketing and healthcare. Okay. So tell me a little bit about the type of teams that you build. Um, one, because you have obviously invested in a lot of technology and data over those last few years, is the type of person that you're now hiring or skills, is that changing um, in terms of what you're looking for? And then two, have you changed the structure of your team in any way to address how you're doing marketing now versus what you were doing a few years ago? We certainly have changed quite a bit. Um, when we first got started, actually when I first arrived at Penn just about, um, about 10 years ago, we were good at essentially getting the print ad to the newspaper on time. We were strong tactically and strong in traditional types of tactics. 
Um, and switching over to more of a precision marketing focus has really led us to think about what kind of skills did we feel like we would need. And so we started then to reimagine our structure and the kinds of uh, positions that we should have. And in those early days, I would say we hired for three basic areas. One was strategy, strategy first, really having a good understanding of what are the business needs of our clinical partners when we have a large cancer center, when we have a large neurosciences program, we want to help make sure that they reach the kinds of patients that are most likely to be most in need of their services. And we want to reach those referring physicians who can also appropriately send patients at the most appropriate point in the, in the course of their care. So strategy first was important. And that's also important because, as I suggested a moment ago, once upon a time, I think this team was probably viewed more as order takers and brochure makers and things like that. But we really felt that it was important to represent marketing as a strong strategic business function. So strategy first. Okay. And then next, we really realized that while we had a good, strong web team, we needed to um, think about that group in a broader view. And so we hired for technical skills to help us with things like building landing pages and really helping us integrate a lot of the data that we would have also, which leads me to the third area, which is analytics. We knew that by running digital campaigns and all that goes with it, um, we would have access to an enormous amount of data as we now have. And what that meant is how would we make sense of it? And how would we really use that data to understand what works, what doesn't work, and even how to do predictive modeling around who's most likely to be at risk for certain kinds of diseases uh, and conditions. And how do we best engage with people based on their search habits and patterns and how they react to different um, types of campaign activity. Wow, that's great. So it sounds like you put a, a lot of work into this. So um, with these changes, are you measured on different things today? than what you were a few years ago? And then, what sure. are they, and then what are you holding your team accountable for? Well, <clears throat> now that we have so much data, we can, we can track so much. Um, we have um, really invested in our marketing analytics and we now have live uh, Tableau reports um, that our teams use really for three different levels of reporting. Uh, the first is really taking a look at campaign activity. It's really for managing the campaigns that we have, what's working, what doesn't, you know, um, and what to do about it. Then the next is really kinds of um, metrics that are appropriate to share with our internal clinical colleagues and clients internally, if you will. People who, as I suggested, in cancer and neurosciences and cardiovascular and so on, are really trying to achieve certain business targets and they're relying on us to help uh, help them do that. So we have a set of reports around uh, where are we in terms of our, say, a quarterly budget for um, talking about, for example, heart failure and how many leads have come in uh, and are we ahead of pace or behind pace in terms of where we thought we would be uh, against that budget and against that effort. And so we monitor that regularly among so many other metrics. But those are the kinds of things that we share with our internal colleagues to say, here's where our targets were. Here's how we're performing now. Let's think about this sort of in a portfolio marketing sense of should we shift dollars? Should we shift efforts? Should we test some other uh, approaches and how to differentiate, of course. And then the third level of communications and reporting with a lot of this data and analytics is really at the executive level. And there we take a look at, as I was suggesting, sort of the whole portfolio 
of all that we are doing, not just for clinical service lines, but for all of our hospitals, our sites, our employed faculty, our affiliated providers, and so on. So uh, there's a lot to share. So Suzanne, you definitely have a great handle on everything. Um, in closing, any words of wisdom for some of your colleagues as they approach some of their own transformations? Well, I think one of our biggest learnings uh, over these last several years is, you know, I think we we um, we invested significantly both in the technology as well as in the people and the data, and I think we've learned that in many ways, while it's been extremely successful for us, putting it all together is harder than it looks. Um, making all these systems work well together, mashing up the data, if you will, appending new data sources to existing records and make it come out in a meaningful kind of way so that we're really getting at the other end what we were hoping to by having more data, not just having more data, but making it meaningful. Um, and so I think one of the things that we've learned is that thinking about it as essentially a, a marketing maturity over time, not trying to do it all at once, but really we've invested ourselves in taking time to develop a roadmap. First, a strategic marketing plan. How does everything fit? What are the priorities? But to add to that, a marketing technology roadmap. What are we investing in, in a multi-year kind of way? And how are we going to support training uh, for the people who we're bringing on board? And to that end, I think we've just found that it's easy to either get tools that we may not be able to support well right away out of the box, if you will, unless we invest in training, unless we have a plan, and then to hardwire things as we go and as we learn. So I guess my point was it's a little bit harder than it looks or than sometimes people make it seem like it's going to be. But with the proper amount of planning and hiring really good people, I think, at least here at Penn, I've been really pleased that we've been able to pull it together in a meaningful way. Very well, Sue, Suzanne, and it's easy to see why you're having so much success over there. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thanks very much, Jeff. It's been a pleasure. You bet.